But thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Adrienne Montgomery. I'm with ERP VAR, and I'm so pleased to have two leaders with us today in the Sage community, Serta Pro and Taya. We're going to be talking about Sage X3 today and automating holiday orders with integrated e-commerce and payments. Pleased to be joined today by Raphael of Edison. He's the account executive over at Serta Pro. Serta Pro is going to be talking about the e-commerce portion of the webinar today. And Nick Young, he'll be giving a demonstration. He's the senior ERP consultant over at Serta Pro. And Mike Fields, he's the senior ERP product manager over at Paya. Both are recognized leaders in the Sage space and have very strong, mature relationships with Sage and the VARs and the entire Sage community. A little bit about Serta Pro. Serta Pro is based in Los Angeles. They are a leader in integrating the Magento interface with Sage 100 and X3, 300, all the Sage products. It's powered by the E-Link interface, which is a two-way connector that connects all the points between the business partner, partner portals, e-commerce portals, and other B2B, B2C e-commerce needs. And they are a Magento technology partner. And they have a team of SAGE certified developers, consultants, technicians, CPAs, and software program, programmers and they can help support and service your Sage X3, Serta Pro, E-Link integration. So lots of experience in the Sage community. Paya is a public company and they're a leading provider of integrated payment and frictionless e-commerce solutions that help customers accept and make payments. So this is a great relationship with Serta Pro because they expedite that uh, connection between payments and the e-commerce storefront. Um, so they increase operating efficiencies and they process more than 40 billion of annual payment volume across credit card, ACH, check, and they're a top provider of payment processing in the U.S. They serve more than 100,000 customers through over 200 key distribution partners. And they focus on high growth verticals such as healthcare, education, nonprofit, government utilities, and B2B goods and services. The business has built its foundation on offering robust integrations into front end CRM and back end accounting systems to enhance customer experience and workflow. So they really drive down the cost of payment processing through all of their relationships and support and integration capabilities with the the unique customers may have they're able to look at that and um really you know add that extra value by making uh unique situations connect together and a little bit about the workflow we're going to start off with Raphael today he's going to introduce you to Serta Pro and talk about the e-commerce integration and then he will hand it off to Nick for a short demonstration of Serta Pro, and then we'll hand it over to Mike to talk about Paya. So thank you so much, Raphael. I'm gonna go ahead and hand it over to you. Thank you, thank you very much, Adrian. Thanks everybody for uh, joining. Uh, let me just share my screen here. I wanted to start by thanking you for providing us with the opportunity to present our e-link solution here today. Uh, my name is Raphael, and I'm the account executive here at Serta Pro. And I'm joined today by Nick Young, who is our eLink product manager, and he will be walking us through the technical portion of the demo. I'd like to start by introducing our company, telling you a little bit about us, our product, and then doing a live demo showcasing our solution. Um, well, a little bit about us, we're located in Los Angeles, California. We spe uh, we've been in business for over 10 years and we specialize in integrating Sage ERP X3 with Magento. Um, we're very Sage centric ISV and Sage is the only ERP system that we work with, which means we have a full team of consultants and developers for each end of the solution. So the website commerce store, the integration and Sage, and we have them in-house and we can provide any custom solution that is required to meet our clients' needs. Our e-link solution is compatible with Sage 100, 300, 500, X3, and even Sage Intact. 
Elink is our well, Elink is our product, and what it does, it forms a two-way sync between Sage and e-commerce platform. It handles all data connection points between Sage ERP and that portal. Your Sage customer information can now be updated to your web store or portal 24-7, 365 days a year. Online orders can be created in Sage and be ready processed within minutes. This is all completed without running manual batch jobs or any manual uh, export and import procedures. It's fully automated. With eLink, your employees can stop wasting time on manual data entry and correcting manual data entry errors. It improves customer visibility and streamlines online ordering processing, providing a better experience for your customers. You can build anything ranging from a simple business partner portal that provides visibility into past invoices, let's say, and orders to a full e-commerce store. One feature that is particularly very popular um, involves customer-specific pricing and inventory. Placing a B2B order often is a very manual process that may involve placing multiple phone calls, generating multiple quotes, and waiting to see what inventory is available. eLink replaces all of that with a simple self-service process. As soon as they log into their custom business partner portal, they'll have access to their custom negotiated rates and inventory. Um, so here's how eLink works. eLink is actually a two-way API that runs on top of the Sage server that allows us to talk to Sage using the Sage business objects. So with our eLink API, if you tell it to create an order, it will actually create the order as if you're tabbing through all the fields in Sage. It's not just putting data in the database. If you have any business logic built into Sage, we'll be following all of the same business logic with our eLink API. Managing product information, prices, stock levels, customer information, and web orders across two platforms is problematic and a real pain point. eLink takes all of that away and replaces it with a simple automated process. eLink synchronizes key information between your Sage installation and e-commerce platform. This reduces the time spent dealing with data entry into two systems, maximizes your profits, and improves customer satisfaction. Data flows securely between your Sage ERP and web store or business partner portal and encrypted files, ensuring your backend remains completely anonymous and secure. Because the web store and the API is hosted outside of your Sage environment, the customer never has direct access to Sage, which makes this one of many cybersecurity measures that we implement. Now let's talk about Magento Adobe Commerce and why we build our Sage X3 eLink integration for this platform only. Magento Adobe Commerce is available in both free and paid versions. Magento stands apart from other popular e-commerce platforms because of its extreme flexibility and customizability. It has its own open source ecosystem with thousands of developers and hundreds uh, and hundreds of available enhancements. It accommodates an unlimited number of products at no extra cost. With Magento, it's, it's really possible to build any type of e-commerce store you need. And without further ado, I'd like to hand the controls to Nick and have him walk you through the technical portion of the presentation. Thanks, Rob. Okay, so I'm going to go through kind of what Prof just explained. So what we have is just a fresh copy of Magento. Uh, we've installed the basic Magento theme, um, and then we imported the, the products that came with this demo theme into Sage so that we had the link between the products and, and the website. Uh, I'm demoing in version 11 on X3 today. Uh, I found out this morning my version 12 demo server is being updated. So uh, all the functionality that you see here on version 11 is also available on version 12 as well. Um, so it's the, it's the same across all versions. Um, so we'll go and just head to a product page. Uh, we bring all of the products in to the website from Sage. So in Sage, you can create your products and you can choose to have them web enabled and then we'll bring in whatever product available information is available in Sage, we can bring that in uh, to the various fields inside the website. So we can bring product name and descriptions and, and everything else. Uh, we 
bring your price sheets or price lists from Sage into the website so you can have your you know customer specific pricing or or custom pricing uh, automatically synced between the website and Sage. You don't have to go and do manual exports or any you know custom pricing updates inside of the website. Uh, we can just sync that stuff directly from Sage. Uh, we bring inventory levels over from warehouses uh, into the website, so you can control in stock and in stock, in stock and out of stock um, by your warehouses uh, on the website. Uh, Magento has granular control over that in stock and out of stock also. So if you have some products that you know have short lead times or they're always in stock or they're custom made, uh, you can make those in stock all the time on the website. Uh, other products you could you know make it so that they're out of stock and can't be ordered or they can be back ordered from the website. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just add a, I'll, we'll do a couple of these shirts and add them to the cart. And then we'll proceed to the checkout. <clears throat> when we get to the checkout, you'll notice that uh, there's customer addresses at the top already. And we bring the customer information from X3 into the website. Uh, so if you have an existing relationship with the customer and you create a web account and link it to their Sage customer, all their address information, everything will flow to, to the website so they don't have to go re-enter that information. <clears throat> so we'll just select the default address that we have for this customer and, and head to payments. Uh, the solution comes with two payment extensions from Magento. One is our credit card payment extension. Um, Paya, who's on this, uh, ERP VAR today, uh, we have full integration with them. So uh, we can do the pre-authorization and the checkout. We'll bring the transaction tokens over from the vault into the transaction on X3. And then from there, when you do your invoicing and um, posting, then the capture will happen and all of that is seamless, just as if you entered the credit card directly in X3. We also add this bill me payment method. The bill me is controlled by the customer's payment terms in Sage. So if you have a, a net 30 or net 60 customer, they'll have this bill me option. If you have a new customer or customer without terms, uh, then this bill me can be hidden for customers based on their terms in Sage. So you don't have to go into the website and change anything for that particular customer. All you have to do is update their terms in Sage and this will appear and disappear based on that. Uh, we can also control this by credit hold as well. So if you have a customer on credit hold in Sage, then when they come to check out on the website, they may be forced to check out with the credit card only because they're currently on credit hold. I'm gonna go ahead and check out with this credit card so I can see how, show you how that transaction comes into Sage. Uh, I have a save, saved payment method already. Uh, if you needed to, you could add a new credit card directly from the checkout. Uh, we have a feature on our uh, credit card extension for Paya where we have the credit card billing address here. Uh, so the order billing address where the invoice is gonna go may not match the credit card billing address for address verification for the bank. So we allow the customer to actually select a billing address that's specific to this credit card. And uh, when they save that credit card for future use, it will save that billing address with the credit card. So the next time they go check out, if they select that credit card, it's going to automatically have the address that goes with that card. So we'll put in a verification number and we will place this order. Once we play this, place this, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the account page so I can show you how that works. Uh, we are using what I call a live syncing system. So this is completely disconnected from Sage. Uh, the website can stay up and it's not dependent on Sage being available in order for customers to place orders, get inventory pricing, print invoices, make payments. As soon as Sage is available, this is gonna be syncing in the background all the time. So this order, when I just placed it, uh, came into their sales order screen as a pending order. Uh, it's got a web order confirmation number, whatever you want to call this. Uh, as soon as it exports to Sage and it will be imported back into the website, then it'll move down here to accepted orders. If I refresh, that should happen in a few seconds. Um, and then once it's in accepted orders, then the customer is seeing the actual inf information that's coming from Sage. And this is going to call me... So this is set to sync between one and five minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go to the queue and we can push this through quicker. let me show you some of the admin functionality. This order will be set in this queue until Sage is available and then it will sync. So I'll go ahead and export it manually. 
Um, so here the order moved from pending down to accepted. It actually got exported to Sage and then imported back to the website. So if I'm looking at the order information here, this information is actually coming from Sage. So if in Sage we went updated pricing or quantity or even add products or, or remove products, the customer in their online portal is going to see those changes here. Um, this has the benefit of we're not using only the web stores tables for products and things like that. So even if you add products that aren't available to purchase online to the order or invoice, uh, when the customer is looking at their account history, they can still see those products on their order and they can see the entire order uh, and history. Um, likewise, if we had orders that were entered directly in Sage and the customer is looking at their sales order screen here, uh, they would also see sales orders that come from Sage that don't have web orders as associated with them. So um, all of the customer's account history it can be shown here on their, their portal. So this can be used as basically a portal for sales orders, invoices, and payments without ever having to use any of the e-commerce functionality at all. Uh, we'll go ahead and, and look at this order in Sage and we'll invoice it. And then we'll sync that invoice back to the order. So if we come in here and we look at today's date, you can see we have the order that we placed online. So it's uh, 157. And here we have the Sage numbers 157. We have the lines that I added to that order. I added an additional one when I was testing while uh, Mike was talking. So um, all of the information that came over from the website is here. And then if we go down, we can see on this order, I did a credit card print transaction also. So if we go to that credit card processing, you can see we have that pre-authorization and the uh, authorization code here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and void this credit card transaction. We'll invoice this as an open order uh, so that we can make a payment on it. I just wanted to show that the transaction comes in. And as Mike was talking about, none of the credit card, uh, you know, information is actually stored on here or even transferred between uh, the website and here. It's all done via tokens uh, and it's using Pi's vault in the back end. So it's all PCI compliance. Uh, so we'll go and change this to a net order instead. And then we will invoice this And we'll post that invoice. So once this invoice uh, is created, um, we'll go ahead and we'll uh, just import invoices. So again, this happens all in the background. Uh, these are all, all of the different endpoints that we touch for Magento and Sage uh, can be configured independently for the syncing uh, and sync intervals as well. So maybe you need your inventory up to date every one minute, but maybe you only need to bring sales orders in every five minutes. Maybe invoices you only send to the website once a day. So you have control over that uh, syncing process and the, the times for the syncing. Um, you can control that around your resources and availability for Sage as well. So when we refresh the screen, you can see now we have an invoice associated with this sales order. If we go back in to look at that sales order, you can see at the bottom we have any invoices that go with that as well as the tracking number. So if we had shipped this in multiple shipments with multiple invoices, we would see all of those invoices down here along with their tracking numbers. We also have an invoice view on Magento where you can search by invoice number, sales order number, items that are on that order. Um, we can add date fields here for searching as well. Um, so really let your customers go in and, and see their invoices and search for them and then they can print copies of them. So if we hit the view uh, invoice on this, again, we have links back to the sales order in, from here as well. Uh, and then all the screens have print versions that can be uh, customized to look like your actual printed forms. So this really takes a lot of the customer service out of uh, having to send customers invoices or, or fax them or whatever it might be. Um, once your customers have ordered and have an invoice, 
then you want to allow them to make payments. Again, fully integrated with Paya. The difference with this and the checkout is uh, we will do the capture here when they make the payment rather than doing a pre-authorization. So we're going to um, use the same credit cards that we have available in checkout. Uh, again, they can add a new payment directly from here if they want to, uh, but we'll go ahead and use that same credit card that we used in the checkout. Uh, we can add any open invoices. So this is that invoice we just created. And if we want to, you can let them pay short pay invoices as well so they can put the amount that they want to pay. So we'll add that to the register. We will place this payment and this will um, be exported to Sage as a cash receipt. The difference between this and the sales order screen I showed you before with the pending section is this will stay up in pending payments until you actually go and finalize and post that, that payment in Sage. So. It'll stay here until it gets applied to their actual balance in Sage. Down in payment history, again, it will show all of their payment history regardless of where that payment came from. So if they send in a check and you do the cash receipt entry in Sage, those checks would down, show down here along with the invoices they paid and the amounts. Uh, so it's a complete view of their account regardless of where the transactions come from. And then we'll go back into Sage and we'll show you that cash receipt quickly. So we'll do the credit card receipts. You can look, we have their receipt from, from today that we just made. Uh, it's for the uh, $97 and it's automatically ap applied to the invoice that they want. And if we look at the credit card processing, you can see here again, we have our authorization code and the status that's already captured here. So the full integration between the credit card uh, and Sage and no manual entry on the cash receipt transaction. However, the customer wanted to pay their invoices and the amounts that they wanted to apply those invoices would already be done. Uh, the screen does allow for paying multiple invoices at one time too. So when they go to make a payment, they can pick from all of their uh, existing open invoices and make, you know, make one credit card transaction. They, they pay multiple invoices off that transaction as well. So there's a quick overview of some of the functionality that the integration provides. Uh, apologize for the issues with the demo server today, but if you want to see a more detailed uh, demo or see the demo on, on version 12, uh, we, we can provide that to you. So uh, I think Roth's contact, contact information will be at the end and um, we can set that up. Uh, I'm gonna pass it back to Roth to... Um, so this is, uh, obviously this is, this is actually, uh, by the way, uh, my name is Mike Field. I am uh, one of the uh, product managers uh, here at Paya. My focus is on um, X3. Um, and uh, so, you know, along with what Sarta Pro has with the Magento and linking into to, um, to X3, um, you also have the option to process right inside of X3. Um, uh, with that, you have several different ways that you can process. Um, you can process through your sales order screens. You can process through your invoice screens. Um, and then obviously through your um, AP, um, AR accounting screens for cash receipts, uh, things of that nature. What you could also do is you can also store um, credit card and ACH information. Um, um, that, that, uh, that information is actually stored on Pi servers. Um, so at no time, is that information available within the software or within your particular servers? Um, so um, uh, the the way to do that is we're gonna we're gonna go to the um, we're gonna go to the customers. Um, what we're gonna do? I'm gonna there we go. Um, so we're gonna go we're gonna add a customer here. Um, So we're going to pick our category. So with with also with um, with X3 that I didn't mention before, it is um, um, you you can have um, different kind um, 
um, it's it's multi multi tenant meaning that um, you know any uh, if you have like a Canadian account or something of that nature you can actually um, you can actually use X3 for that as well. Um, so it's very versatile um, in 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 that respect. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to pick um, the U.S. We're going to pick our customer that we want to store a card for. We're going to go to the financial tab. And in the financial tab, we have a credit card icon uh, right down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on that. And uh, we're going to click the... Uh, the new, um, uh, the new option over on the right. Uh, we're going to enter our nickname uh, of what we want to uh, call this particular payment. Uh, so I'm going to do, uh, and, and then we're going to pick our processing code that we have. Um, if if we want to store an ACH option, we have the ACH button right here. Um, and if we do that, then that will change. Uh, that will change the information to uh, a, a routing number and a bank account number. Um, we're going to put in the first and last name. All right. At that point, we're going to go over and hit the Create button. Then what we're going to do um, is we're going to click Edit Card. Down at the bottom, our, um, our uh, account form is going to come up. Um, we're going to um, enter our card number, enter the expiration date, and we're going to enter our year. We're going to hit submit. Says the account vault is successfully added. Click close, and then at that point, it's going to show up on the on the left hand side. So that's how you store a card. Very very simple. Um, and uh, like I said, at no time is it on your servers or, or anything like that. It's stored on, on uh, Pi as well. And then when you need it, um, uh, it uh, uh, X3 goes out, uh, gets that information from Pi and brings it back in. Um, <clears throat> to, do a, uh, to do a sales order, I'm just going to run through a sales order real quick just, just to show you how it works. Um, so we're going to go to our sales order uh, module. Going to add the <clears throat> add the order here. So um, on the sales order, you can you can do a, a couple of things here. So um, you can <clears throat> you can charge the credit card or ACH um, right on the sales order, or you could wait till you get to the invoicing piece. Um, or uh, even even better is that you could actually go through the whole process and then um, and then. Um, when the customer gets their invoice and they want to pay it, you know they're going to call you up and and you can you can pay it from there. Usually, like net terms, net ten, net thirty. What that's driven by is it's driven by um, the payment term here. So right now I have it defaulted to a net thirty. So if we process this order, the payment screen wouldn't come up, okay? Because it is set to a net thirty uh, a net thirty payment term. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the magnifying glass. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to go to credit card, and then that's what's going to invoke that um, that processing screen. Okay. So once I hit that, I'm going to go to my line step. <clears throat> I'm going to enter my um, my product, and then just put in the the required information here. I'm going to order a quantity of one. Uh, the price is going to be $150. <clears throat> At that point, I'm going to click the Create. Um, and when I click the Create button, then the credit card processing comes up. So um, so once again, you have a, a, a couple of options that you can do here. <clears throat> you can process a brand new card. So if you if your merchant doesn't want to store a card or, or anything like that, you can create the new card option. And everything is kind of going to blank out, and then you're going to be able to enter enter things in here okay um, but we're going to use a we're going to use a storage card um, additionally what what this integration has is um, it has two things that that really does it really uh, uh, makes it a, a little bit more uh, a little better 
you have your level three. So just real quick, if you have, if you process any business cards or corporate cards, um, you have the ability to, to get lower, uh, lower credit card rates when you process those particular cards. Um, X3 has the ability to pass that additional information that's required from Visa and MasterCard, and it, uh, it allows you to get those lower rates. Some of those rates could be as low as uh, al almost 1%. You know, um, so it's a, it's a very significant savings if you process a lot of those corporate cards. Um, what this integration also has is it has the ability to hook up to cloud terminals. So if you're using X3 as, um, as a storefront, um, or I'm sorry, as a point of sale um, in your storefront, um, you, can, um, you can hook up these cloud terminals um, that will attach directly to X3. And um, once you, once you process that transaction, it's going to light up that terminal so your customer can either swipe or dip their card. Okay. Um, so, and all that information is going to come back into, um, into X3 for you. Okay. Um, once again, saving you on some, some, uh, some rates because you're using a, um, you're using a card present transaction rather than a, uh, a card not present. Um, so what we're going to do here, um, we're going to choose the account nickname um, that we uh, that we stored, and it was Jan here. And then what we're going to do is we're simply going to click submit at the top. Okay. And then what you're going to find is that down here at the bottom now we have $150 that is authorized. Okay. So when it's authorized, it it's in an off only status or or what we normally call pre authorization. So that pre-authorization, you can um, you can take that pre-authorization. You can add <clears throat> shipping. Um, you can add tax. You can add additional items if needed. Um, and then when you post that transaction, it, that uh, that original authorization is going to adjust to the um, to the captured amount. Okay. Um, the um, all the while the customer is only seeing one charge on the card. Okay. Um, Additionally, what you could also do here if you wanted to is you could actually just click the void button and then this would void that transaction for you if the customer decides, you know what, I don't want this order. Um, and then that way it'll just, uh, it, it'll just come off of the, of the order for you. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, so we've, we've authorized it. So we're going to close this. So now what I'm going to do, um, is I can, I can do a, a, a couple of things. Um, I can, um, I'm going to hit the delivery button and, and, you know, each, each thing that I'm doing is, is going to be, you know, customized or molded to, to your business process. So if you, if you have to do any kind of allocation or any kind of pre preparation, you know, you're, you're going to do that first before you obviously deliver it. Since this is a test system, I don't worry about that stuff. Um, I just go straight to the de delivery option. So I'm going to go ahead and hit delivery. I'm going to go ahead and deliver it. Okay. And then um, I need to validate it. Okay. So I'm going to validate it. All right. And then what I can do is um, from here, um, um, I can actually go and I can actually add anything else that I need, whether I need um, any kind of um, delivery fee or, um, um, or, you know, shipping fee or anything like that. And then when I'm done with that, I can go ahead and I can go ahead and click invoice. And once I invoice it, I can, um, that, um, uh, once I invoice it, it's going to turn into an invoice. And then when, once I click post, then that's when, that's when everything's going to happen as far as the adjustment of the, of the, uh, of the, uh, order. Okay. So I want to hit post. When I hit post, it's going to say that it's posted. Everything's done within X3. Um, and then if we would go to, um, to our virtual terminal, we would see that we have $150 as approved. Um, so I'll go there right now. So if we go to our transactions within the virtual terminal, we see that we have $150 here. Um, if we scroll over, we see that it's approved. And then at the end of the night, this is going to settle, and then it's going to get funded to your bank within 24 to 48 hours. OK, 
done. So it kind of works seam seamlessly with um, with the virtual terminal. Um, and then when you're you know back in um, uh, back in X3, you're going to do all of your normal stuff. You're going to do your deposits. You're going to do your bank posting, uh, things of that nature. Um, so everything everything is is normal um, after this. The only thing that we're adding is obviously we're adding that uh, that uh, that credit card piece. Okay. Um, um, the the setup and the installation of of this particular integration it's all free. Um, once you get um, once you get credentials from Pia, um, I would probably be the one to integrate everything for you. Um, once the in installation is done, the actual integration of the credit card processing takes about 10 minutes. Okay, um, so the way that that would happen is we would go um, to our credit card um, payment gateways uh, within X3. <clears throat> Go out of here first. So we go to our uh, payment gateways. Uh, oh, sorry. Let's go to our payment gateway setup. <laughs> so when we go to our payment gateway setup. Um, we um, we go ahead and we um, we we add a gateway, um, or we add a setup within within um, X3. We put in all of the um, parameters that we need, um, you know, user ID, API key, uh, things of that nature. If we wanted level three, we would check that level three. Um, we also have the payments options down here at the bottom. Um, so you can um, there's one uh, there's one option here, the authorization step. So when the authorization step, you have uh, you have two options. You have order, entry, and post. Basically, what this means is that um, if you if you change this to post, everything that you do from sales order to delivery and everything like that is going to mark be marked as selected. And then when you post the order, that's when everything's going to happen. That's when all of the processing is going to happen. Totally up to your business practice and 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 actually how you how you want that set up. Um, you could have multiple um, multiple companies within X3 and multiple setups. So if you have uh, two different companies with two different tax IDs and you have to keep them separate, you can have one setup for company A and one setup for company B, and then you could process off of those as well. Okay, and all of those transactions will uh, will be separate um, because of those uh, different setups. All right. Um, support wise um, we have a we have a support team of about 30 people um, and they um, they work both um, here in Reston Virginia and we have uh, we also have some in um, Atlanta Georgia um, and uh, we also have uh, me as the product manager that would walk you through um, all of the steps like I said before um, other than that I um, hope you enjoyed it um, if you have any questions please let, let me know I'll be more than happy to schedule some one-on-one -on -one demos um, if we if we need to. So thank you very much. I want to say thank you so much for your presentations. It's great to learn about your solutions and the best practices when it comes to payments and uh, e-commerce. So I'm going to go ahead and wish everyone happy holidays and thank you so much for spending your time with us. We do appreciate it and we hope to see you on a future webinar. Everyone take care. Thank you very much. Everyone, take care.